Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Well it must be, it says so there doesn't it, look. There you go. The voice of hardcore boxing. Well that's self that's self titled. What do you think is it colour? I'm going for Eric Cantona look, what do you reckon? Trying to be trendy. Uh, a bit late with this video, but I want it to go out. We're going to talk about the free boxing shows that are worth talking about at the weekend, and I'm going to give an opinion on it because that's what I do. I give opinions. Now, let's just get this camera right. Have a look. Right, here we go. This is a show that was on at the weekend. Bob Arum and MTK. Alright, it's their show. 11 fights. Uh, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 11 fights. Four of the opponents had losing records. You know, Naheem Chaudhry, 2 and 50 against Sean. Gerard Duffy, who won and oh, people like that. Callum Bradley, two and oh, fighting Jose Hernandez, four and thirty-five and one. Uh, them two won. Damian Sullivan, one and oh, he lost against a guy who were two and one. Now, it don't really mean anything when you've got guys there. They've had four fights and they meet, and one of them loses. So Damian Sullivan will come again, but Callum Bradley. Looks alright, so does Sean Gerard Duffy. Uh, Dennis McCann, he won. He's starting to get a bit of momentum. He beat Georgia and Uh I think he's a good bantamweight, Dennis. Uh, I think Damian Sullivan, who lost against Matus Kabisian, he's a cruiserweight. Uh, he'll, he'll pick his set up and go again, but Callum Bradley, super feather, he won against Hernandez and uh, Sean, lightweight Sean, Gerard Duffy, Naeem Chaudhry, he won. They're going to win when you're fighting guys 2 and 50 in a draw. Paddy Barnes, 5 and 2, bantamweight, he beat Joel Sanchez. Uh, he had a losing record, Joel Sanchez, 4 and 6. Now, when I look at Paddy Barnes, right, Paddy Barnes, how can I explain it? He fought for a world title in August last year, right? He fought for a world title. He then fights in New York. He lost his world title. He then lost in New York against Oscar Majoka, who were 11 and 5 and a, and a draw. Now, fair enough, that was a split decision, but for him to come back and fight against a guy with a losing record, less than in under a year since fighting for the best belt there is, the WBC flyweight title, I don't get that, I think that's, what, what, what is he going to learn from that fight? Do you know what I mean? He's fighting a guy with four wins and six losses and a draw, but yet 11, 11 months ago, 11 and a half months ago, he's fighting for world title. So I think that's craziness. That is just craziness. Uh, I think he should have been in a better fight than that, but the problem that you've got with that weight that Paddy Barnes has, has fought at is, you know, there's not that many people to, to, to choose from when it's a bit late in day and he's not a big puncher, he's only stopped one person so I don't know really to be honest what where he goes from here Paddy Barnes I don't know he's 32 years of age which is knocking on a bit you know for a bantam weight and he's already had a couple of losses out of eight fights uh, he fought for a world title in his sixth fight so I don't know. I'd like to see him in a domestic dust-up, but there's, he, he, he's the only guy in Ireland who's fighting at that weight. 
he's the only one so he's the number one in Ireland but he's also the only one so I don't know it's an hard way to mess about with, with fighters but I'd like to see Paddy Barnes in a fight with our fighter I'd like to see him fight Tommy Frank and I'm sure that uh, if MTK want to get in touch with Dennis I'm sure we could sort that out last year he was a flyweight this year is a bantam well Tommy fights in the middle I think that's a good fight for Tommy uh, Frank I really do I think it's a good fight I also think it's a good fight for uh, Sonny Edwards but I'm not so I don't wait with Sonny Edwards do I so I can't be matching other people other fighters now Padre McCrory super middleweight 8 to 0 that to me is still a novice at 8 and 0 he fought for the vacant Irish belt self Celtic belt sorry BUI Celtic belt against Steve Collins Jr now what I find interesting about that is didn't Steve Collins Jr uh, start out his career as a cruiserweight wasn't it I don't know he's already fought for, against Paddy McDonough at light heavyweight I'm sure he started out as a cruiserweight. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But Steve Collins Jr., uh, big lad, uh, but only four stoppages out of 14 wins. So some of the guys that he's been fighting uh, have been shocking, really. I mean, he's fighting guys one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Out of his 18 fights, Steve Collins Jr., 13 of them have had losing records, so what's going on there? I don't know. I think it's just another case of a father who were a world champion like Steve Collins and his son wants to be like his dad but if he's stopped four guys out of 14 wins he can't punch for Toffee can he, he's another feather duster man well it is what it is isn't it, who, who am I to say who can punch and who can't punch but Steve Collins Jr I think he needs to give it up so give it up mate and go to something else but you know he's 29 year old now and he's getting tonked by novices so and his last his last two wins after his last defeat uh, were against two guys with losing records and it, sorry was it his last two wins were against guys with losing records but looking at the the the, the, the loss that he had before Stephen Ward beat him 7 and 0 Paddy McCrory beat him 8 and 0 that's at light heavy he's dropped down to super middle he's been beat by a guy who's 8 and 0 so uh, what weight is he is he a cruiser is he light heavy is he super middle I don't know am I being too harsh on Steve Collins Jr no I'm not but as far as I'm concerned he needs to pack it in so it is what it is isn't it but getting back to the next one on let's have a look Alfredo Melli 16 and 0 on a draw be Ariak Marutjan 8 and 0 at middleweight oh, I've, not, I've, not, I've not heard any of them Sean McComb 7 and 0 beat Ronald Gerardo 24 and 24 well that's not a losing record but it's not a winning record is it 24 and 24 and a draw 7 and 0 kid then you've got Michael Conlon an 11 and 0 kid massive massive superstar in Ireland massive massive star I mean he's got uh, Olympic bronze is it he's got world amateur gold European gold massive star featherweight beat Diego Alberto Ruiz for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Featherweight title and the WBO Intercontinental so more belts for Michael Conlon he moves to 12 and 0 Luke Keeler 16 and 2 and a draw beat Luis Arias 18 and 1 now that is a good win that is a good win 
And on the card as a whole, it looks to me like they've gone ten. At, the home fighters have won ten and lost one. There's only Damian Sullivan lost. So, but Luke Keeler against Luis Arias, that's a good win for Luke Keeler, and that's a really, really good 50-50 fight. That, as they say, a good trade fight. So, Chris Jenkins beat Paddy Gallagher. That's a well-matched fight for vacant Commonwealth. Uh, well to eight title, well it will be when it's, it's the Commonwealth, Simon Block, uh, the commissioner from there, he lives in the south of France, Simon, shout out Simon, I know you watch the channel, uh, Simon drives up from f south of France uh, into England and crosses, and crosses the, uh, the channel, so... Nice day to drive up from south of France, isn't it, for a show? I don't know how he's got to Ireland though, he's probably flown there. But good win for Chris Jenkins and the show as a whole, you'd say you've got one, two, three good fights there. You could say you've maybe got four good fights out of eleven. So I'd give that show a seven and a half out of ten. They probably put that show on for not a lot of money. But they've ended up with BT Sport and USA ESPN so there's been some they've made some money off that and I mean you've got 11 fighters here let's have a look I bet there weren't 400 grand paid in in, in, in purses for that lot I bet there weren't 400 thousands so some people have done well with that show that's a good profit profit making show that wait let's go on to the next card and I'm going to do Eddie Hearn's one last uh, I've took the better keyboard home. This is. Cause I, I prefer to work from home myself. I don't like to come here all the time. It's, uh, it's a drive here and I prefer to work from home than I can just lay in bed all day. <laughs> Only joking. Right, have a look. Right, the. the, the I'm going here. Right, well, here's a show, and here's a, here's a favourite of mine, it's somebody I've met as well. Now... Let's have a look. Come on, what's the matter? Uh, right, the, the show at the weekend in... Brooklyn at the Barclays Centre. Right. Tom Brown show. TGB promotions. It were on Fox, USA Fox. Now nobody in the boxing industry expected two, four, six, eight, ten. Eleven fights on here. Now nobody expected this sh this show to end up like it did not. Now what I'm going to say to you now, there's matchmaking and there's kamikaze matchmaking, but there's also guys who are professional matchmakers and promoters and managers and people like myself who think they know it all. And every now and then boxing brings up some surprises. So I'm going to show you something here. Look at this. Look at all the red dots on that lot. Look how evenly matched some of the fights are. Now this is a good show. This is what you call. This is what I call a, pro a proper, a proper, proper show. Now, watch this. I'm going to start from the beginning. Marcellus Wilder. Right. Obviously, he's the uh, relative of. Uh, Deontay Wilder. He won. He beat N Nicoy Clark, who had a losing record. Let's have a look how many have got losing records. We've got 11 fights on here. 1, 2, 3. So 3 out of 11 have got losing records. That's good. Right. I know the guys with losing records have to fight somebody, but when <laughs> both the guys on this, they're evenly matched. You've got a guy Norton 2 fighting a guy 3 and 0. A guy not and free fighting a guy one and all, so that's good matchmaking. Heavyweight Marcellus Wilder four and one beat Nicoy Clark. 
who's two and three. Good win for him. Super welterweight, Kessner Davis, 3 0. Beats Jamie Meza, Norton 2. Arnold Gonzalez, welterweight, 1 0. Uh, has been postponed against Jemiah de los Santos. Welterweight, Keyshaw Williams, 5 0. Postponed against Mario Alberto Perez Navarro. So basically, it's nine fights. So out of the nine fights, only two had losing records, so they're down to nine. But out of the nine fights, one, two, three, four, five. Five wins out of nine. Four losses. Now that tells you that these are good fights. So if you, go, well, if you want to watch a good show at the weekend, you should have watched this show here, the Tom Brown show. But like I said, if you go through BoxRec and you look at Tom Brown, who is uh, a promoter from America, go and look at his matchmaking because he's a bit like myself, a bit kamikaze. He thinks of the fans and I always like a good Tom Brown show, but looking at this show, I mean, Ellen Joseph, 15 and 3 and 2 draws against Edina Kiss, 15 and 10, she beat her at featherweight. Julian Sosa, well to 8, 13 and 0, and a draw. He lost to Brian Jones, 14 and 10. That is a shock. 14 and 10 guys don't beat 13 and 0 guys with a draw. Another shock. Carlos Negron, heavyweight, 20 and 2. He lost to Brian Howard, 14 and 3. That shocks me. The big shock's coming in a minute. Then you've got... Cobia Breedy, featherweight, 13 and 0 against Ryan Lee Allen, 10 and 3 and a draw. He won that one. Curtis Stevens, super welterweight, 30 and 6, lost against Whale Amatozo, 27 and 4. Curtis Stevens, we all remember him, don't we? He was the one whose eyes popped out when Golovkin rattled him. Now that was that middleweight. Since then, he's been fighting at middleweight all the way through. That was 2013. All of a sudden, 2019, six years later, the guy decides to come down a weight. At what age is he? 34. 34 coming down a weight. Is he crazy? Adam Kaunaki, heavyweight, beat Chris Ariola, 38 and 5. Kaunaki moves to 20 and 0. Right. Coming to my favourite one now, and I've watched this one. Right. Marcus Brown, who everybody tipping for greatness, and I mean greatness. He is the biggest light heavyweight in the country for the simple reason he puts 22 pounds on. Right. This is a guy who gets in the ring at 197, 192 to 197 in the ring on the night. Let me repeat that. He's putting 22 up to 22 pound on. 197 in the ring. Cruiserweights, 200 pound. The guy's a cruiserweight getting in the ring. Could you imagine a small super middle stepping up to light heavy and fighting him? Eh? Would Canelo want to fight Marcus Brown? No, he wouldn't, would he? He might do now, though, but John Pascal dropped him three times. And in the eighth round, he had an egg clash, it got stopped. John Pascal, it's not the first time that's happened to John Pascal before. Uh, let me go down here, beginning of his career, let me have a look. I know his first loss was against Carl Froch. I was there ringside, sat behind Tyson Fury's family. Tyson Fury made his debut that night, 2008. Right. Chad Dawson, 29 and 0, pound for pound superstar. IBO world champion, WBC world champion. He fought... John Pascal and got beat. Adrian Diacono fought John Pascal and got beat. Now they were pound for pound guys at the time. Pound for pound. Do you know what I mean? But it is what it is, isn't it? Now, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, he is no mug, John Pascal. He's beat. Pfft, 
who's he beat here? Let's have a look. Kingsley High Key, is he, is he, is he, John Pascal's got a great record, he's fought everybody. He has fought everybody. Have a look. Oh, minute, 20 minutes. Look at guys, John Pascal's being in with you. Kingsley Akiki, you were going to fight Froch at one point back in the day. He fought, John Pascal fought Froch for vacant WBC super middleweight title. He was a barnstormer. Internet fighter year amongst hardcores. Now, he's fought. Let's have a look. Deacono, Branco. He's got two wins over Deacono, right? He took Deacono's O. He beat Branco, a former champion, who beat Robin Reed, and then he fought Diacono again. So he's got three wins there over world champions, four with Chad Dawson. He's got a draw against Hopkins, I thought he won that, he dropped him twice. He's beat Boote, that's his fifth world champion. He beat him with Kovalev twice. You know, the, the, the guy's... Uh, you know, he's been in with Bivol. You know, he's just beat Marcus Brown. He's got a great record, man. He has got a great record, John Pascal. And he's still going strong at his age. He's even beat Darnell Boone, who dropped Andre Ward. So, he's an Olympian. He smashed Paul Smith to bits in Commonwealth Games. Paul Smith ended up with a silver. Uh, he's very athletic. He's 37 years of age in October. And he has just beat Marcus Brown, who people were tipping for great things, and he's 28 year old. And he's just beat Badu Jack. Do you know what I mean? So, he beat Francisco Sierra. He out-toughed him. He beat Aaron Pryor Jr. Look, he's got Campillo. Campillo, Badu Jack. Uh, he's got some good wins on his record. Point I'm trying to make here is this, right? point I'm trying to make is this. The last thing he loses is your power. Marcus Brown tried to have a tear up with John Pascal who weren't throwing as many punches but the ones he did throw connected him. He was patient, he waited his chance, boom, he beat him. He's now going to rematch him from what I've heard and that'll be a great matchup and who knows what John Pascal's going to turn up. So let's go to the Eddie Hearn show now and finish off. Yeah, let's go to the Eddie Hearn show and finish off now. Let's have a look. There we go. Anthony Fowler. He headlined against Brown Rose. But we'll start at the very beginning. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 fights again. And no cancellations because there were 9 at the last one. 23 minutes. Right, let's see if we can get this done in 7 minutes. Right, here we go. Arthur's Gakins. You know, who oh, oh, on earth is he? Let's have a look. Hang on, that's his first. That's his first guy that he beat. Is that the guy where he should have got stopped? Where he should have got disqualified? I don't know. But anyway, we'll start off with Nathan Farrell, welterweight, on his debut against Dylan Draper, one and thirty-five. Jesus, let's have a look who matchmaker is. Paul Reddy, <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, Eddie's guy, Paul Reddy, right, one, two, three, four, so out of the 11, we've got four we losing records, that's not bad, guy on his debut against the guy, one and 35, we'll give you a pass on that, Eddie, lightweight, Dylan Evans, 2 and 0 against Alex Sanders, Birkenbegs, 5 and 23, we'll give you that. Light heavyweight Thomas Whitaker, 1 and 0. Against Ivo Creston, 2 and 10, we'll give you that. John Doherty, light heavy, 5 and 0. Against Daryl Sharp, 5 and 56, we'll give you that. I like John Doherty. Super Feather, Quas Ashfak, or Quasi, is it? Or Quasi? Quasi Ashfak, 6 and 0. Beat Sean Davis, 14 and 3. Robbie Davis Jr. I like him. 
super lightweight, 140 pounder, beat Michael Duffek 25 and 21. Duffek shouldn't have really been in the same ring as Robbie Davis Jr. He's a world class fighter, but it appears it's just a tick of a fight because they're fighting at Liverpool. Martin Bacoli, a longer. 12 and 1, it'd be Yatola Peria, 11 and 4. I did say in a video the other day, we wouldn't even use him to spar amateurs. And what happened? Bacoli topped him in a round, didn't he? So, it is what it is. Billy Nelson, you should be ashamed of yourself putting your game with him. What are you learning? Unless you're just build, doing it to build up your guy, but your guy's been in with Michael Hunter, so why is he in with this guy here? Shocking matchmaking. But you don't know how much they had in the pot. Sean McGoldrick, bantamweight, 9 and 0. He lost to Thomas Asomba. Tell you a little story about Thomas Asomba. I think I've told it before. Me, Thomas Asomba, my friend Pat Cummins, and. Thomas Asomba's trainer, Sean Whitbeard. And Phil Jeffries, Jaffa, you know, Tony Jeffries' dad. Bronze Olympic and Tony Jeffries got a bronze at Olympics, didn't he? Dennis tried to sign him years ago. Right, we're leaving Rutland Hotel, we're going to Arena for fight. So I ended up in this car with Phil Jeffries, Black Range Rover, 105 mile an hour down Attercliffe. 105 mile an hour. Now, I sat in the back at the time, I was struggling with addictions, and uh, I chewed off my face off, I was looking at my mate. I was like that, is it on top, are we being chased, what's going on here, I got to Arena, to Magna and I thought, oh my god, I will never get in a car ever again with uh, Phil Jeffries, aka Jaffa but he's a pal and I like him and that show that uh, we put on with Phil Jeffries that day was, I'm trying to think, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the exact date when that was, was it while he did? Was it while he did? I think it was. It was my birthday, my 45th birthday. Piss up. Walid Din, the Magna. Walid was 7 and 0. Oh. And uh, Dennis and him, if you watch the press conference, they were going to have a bet, but they didn't because Dennis said scrap metal wasn't doing much then, and it wasn't then. But I told Thomas the Sombra, you'll beat Walid Din if you soften him up with body shots. And he listened. Thomas the Sombra. Uh, if anybody knows his story, his friends with Terry Chapandama, him and his friend, they came over for the London Olympics and they never went back to the country. What do they call it when you defect, is it? Is it defect or plead asylum or to, whatever? Nice kid, and I'm glad that he's just won at weekend because I like Thomas Asomba. I like him a lot. Uh, Jack Cullen, middleweight, 16 and 1, beat John Hardin, Mark Tibbs' fighter. Uh, I'm gutted, f no, sorry, yeah, he beat him, didn't he? Beat John Hardin, didn't he? Yeah, beat him, yeah. He beat him, yeah. I'm gutted for him, but Jack Cullen is a talent at middleweight. But John Hardin will come again, that will for a title, that an English title. Lewis Ritson, super lightweight now, 18 and 1, beat Marek. Jerdijewski, 14 and 2. Good win for Lewis Ritson. It looks like they're going to build the Lewis Ritson fight up against Robbie Davis Jr. That's a great fight. The other fighter that Eddie's got that bottled it for Robbie Davis Jr. was Josh Kelly. Bottled it twice. Was it? No, no, it wasn't Robbie Davis Jr. It was it were a Neil Marsh fighter. Who were it now? We bottled it from David Evanetian. I think. He bottled it from Evanetian, but I don't think Lewis Ritson will bottle it because I think he's got he's made at stern stuff, and I think that's a good fight. Robbie Davis Jr. though for me is the full package, and the loss that he had, the loss that Robbie Davis Jr. had. Let me tell you this right. Let me have a look at it. He got knocked out, didn't he, against Michael Sarafki, and, he, and then he and then he knocked him out. So basically, Robbie Davis Jr. It must have been true that he didn't have a good camp that time. But let me tell you this, Robbie Davis Jr, he is the real deal, right? I said that ages ago, and I'm a big fan of his, I like him, and I hope he does well. So, but 
But him and Ritson's a great fight. It's a sky headliner. They'll get paid. Anthony Fowler. We've got 30 seconds to finish this off. 9 and 1. Beat Brian Rose. Moves to 10 and 1. At middleweight, he's stepped up a weight. Uh, we're not going to do all this, are we? So I'm going to have to do it in a two part. Uh, so. Anthony Fowler beat Brian Rose on points. I believe it were on points. Yeah, we're on points. Ten rounds. Unanimous decision. What do I think about Anthony Fowler? Uh, I think he stayed in. How old is Anthony Fowler? Let me have a look. Anthony Fowler's in his 29th year, right? So he's just fought Brian Rose, right? How old is Brian Rose? Let's have a look. Let's have a look how old Brian Rose is. Brian the Lion Rose. Brian the Lion Rose, 21% KO ratio, but they're calling him a lion. I think Yarde might need to change his name. He, he, because if Brian Rose is a lion, what's yard? Brian Rose, next birthday, he's 35. He's 35 before he's... Uh, before Fowler's... He's 35 before Fowler's 29. So, a guy in his 29th year against a guy in his 35th year. Right, 29 at 35. That's 64. Split that in two. That's 32. So the average age for the headline act is 32 years, right? Or maybe just under 32. So how can that be next gen? I don't get that. I don't get that at all. But if he's moving up to middleweight, Fowler, he's going to use the weight as an issue not to fight Scott Fitzgerald. Because Scott Fitzgerald will beat him up. Basically dropped him and bashed him up, didn't he? He's a light middle, or super welter, as the board say. So as far as I am concerned, I think that they might not meet again. I think Fowler might bottle it and try and go a different route, because he's already jumped to middle, hasn't he? He's giving away his advantages, because Coldwell were running around saying, we're strong as a light middle, we're strong as a light middle. Well, why move up to middle, then, if you're strong? I don't get that. You're giving away all your advantages. So that's how... I, Unless you're just really struggling at the weight, but yet you're telling people, well, we're, we're all right at the weight, but really you're struggling. It's like, we all know that Callum Smith's struggling, don't we, to make to make super middle, but they're going to tell people they're doing it easy. It's all psychological, isn't it? Always think the opposite of what fighters say when they talk about weight. So, but that's about it, really. The, uh, the Bob Arum show in Ireland... You'd give a seven and after the Tom Brown show. You'd give a ten. That's a ten. The MTK Bob Adams show a seven and a half. A ten for the for the Tom Brown show, and the Eddie Earn one at the weekend. You'd give a you'd give a six for that, wouldn't you? You'd give it a six. So I don't want to hear anybody say, "Oh, it was a great show and all that." No, 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 no. If you accept crap. Then when they put something a bit better than crap on, you think that's brilliant. That's the mindset they're trying to get you at. But it is what it is, isn't it? But as far as I'm concerned, Eddie can do better, but he's spread himself thin, hasn't he? But when they do do good, I say it. I mean, the show with Yui Fury on and them, and Povetkin and Luke Campbell and uh, Lomachenko, that's a bonanza. That's the best one he's put on for a long time, isn't it, really? But it might bomb. I don't know, but... Either way, it's not my problem, is it? My problem is growing my channel and making sure that our fighters are all right, at our stable. So, because we're at the other end of the spectrum, aren't, aren't we, really? But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but, you know, it's a hobby. Stroke might be a living for me with boxing at the moment, but... It's a sport unlike any other. It's an unf it's an unforgiving sport. But Mick Whale will be here tomorrow to see me here. We're going to go through some lists, have a cup of tea and a catch up, and I might even do a bit of training one day this week at Mix if I've got time. I don't find time because I'm uh, 
I'm bang into my snooker and my pool at the moment I put in a couple of hours in a day and I want to I wanna grow my channel so I ain't got time to be punching punch bags I've got a punch bag here if I want to get some aggression out but I can work on my technical abilities can't I if, uh, if I've got a mix because uh, he's done well with Josh Annie and uh, Dempsey and Gwyn so he knows what he's on with and he's a pal and I like to keep in touch with my pals but peace out keep on trucking keep supporting boxing it's a fantastic sport and also I want you to like the videos and subscribe if you haven't subscribed subscribe and then you're not going to miss your porky fix are you because it'll come straight to your phone if you're subscribed all right let's grow the channel together and let's stick it to the establishment all right wait we'll crack on with next video all right next one is a corker